Well, welcome back to the Remote No Pressure Podcast, Bill. Well, hello, hello. Good to be back. It is good to be back. So, a couple of weeks ago, we, we joked around about <laughs> producer cough. <laughs> there he is again. And uh, the next morning, I couldn't get out of bed. That's been going around. Has been going around. I thought I had COVID. I, I thought you like, did too. For sure, because you had gotten exposed to it, didn't you, at work or something oh, like man, that? Oh, man, I've had like a bunch of exposures. Um, I've exposed myself so many times, I don't know. <laughs> 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 Nothing like a good old-fashioned exposure. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, um, I've, I've been in quarantine like three or four times since it started. But okay. uh, no, I haven't, I haven't had it. Well, luckily, I haven't had it again. I've heard if you you're, I've heard of some people getting it again also, but I've heard the infection rate is like one uh, percent people get it a second time. So okay. about the same as getting the vaccine. They said not to be not to jump on politics or vaxxers or not vaxxers. I'm just saying what my wife's looked up, and uh, so I'm throwing her under the bus there. So my wife told me I didn't need to get <laughs> vaccinated. What should I tell her, everybody? Comment below. <laughs> No, she's been more diligent in like the research on this too. But well, that's yeah. great. Yeah, that's great. So, all that being said, I was worried when you came down with possibly COVID last week, mm -hmm. um, not knowing if you were infected or not. And then I actually, <coughs> whoa! Now, now I've got producer cough too. But I actually uh, drank off a beer of yours last week. Right, right. I'm an alcoholic. Yeah, yeah. And uh, so I was a little, I was a little panicky. Uh, myself like well this is a good way to test the antibodies if I got it <laughs> and uh, I didn't catch nothing and um, you uh, ended up coming down with being negative right yeah negative. once or twice yeah yeah well first of all I went to a place in uh, this drugstore and they got my they mishandled my uh, my hey yo yeah <laughs> <laughs> and so <laughs> so then it was like oh we you know we didn't handle this sample correctly can you come back? And that was like, okay. And so I was like in five days, I was just kind of in limbo of, do I have COVID or not? I couldn't get out of bed. I had the chills. I had all the signs, except for I could taste just fine. You know, I didn't lose my taste, but everything else I was like, I was, I was convinced, dude. I was like, this is the big one. Remember Sanford and Son? <laughs> yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, it was Elizabeth. Elizabeth. I was in bed, you know, calling out, Jamie. <laughs> I thought it was, that was the end right there, man. And then you think, well, why hadn't I gotten vaccinated yet? You know, like if I get sick and I haven't been vaccinated. Fully I was like, more on my game. I was like, Ugh. not a smart thing to do, but I'm alive and well today. But yeah, so we weren't able to record last week. I was just sick as a dog and still recovering. So I think probably this past weekend uh, was when I started feeling you know, a little bit more Starting normal. Come back. Yeah, but mm -hmm. I'm still tired. Like I'm still pretty exhausted. Yeah, we uh, ended up going to our in-laws, like I was telling you, and um, picked up a bit of a bug, uh, like a cold. Mm. So, yeah, we're kind of we're kind of droopy too in our household. But but see, here's the deal. Like, if you guys are currently on our YouTube channel, if you're not, please go to our YouTube channel, click like and subscribe, and also comment something. I don't care what you comment, just comment something below. It helps with the algorithms. But you will see, it is currently the middle of May. I have a sweater on. And I'm wearing a flannel. And you're wearing right? a flannel. It's cold. <laughs> it's like low 50s with wind chills. So I bet it's in the 40s with wind chills. But they're saying by the weekend, when this airs, it's going to be 70s. I hope so, bro, because so, I can't handle this cold weather anymore. I know. I, I have a cabin booked next week out, of, out in the Gun Lake area. Okay. It's a rustic cabin, no heat, no plumbing. But... um. It, I'm really hoping that it's like 70s then too, because we're supposed to take the kayaks out. It's supposed to get into summer here, you know. I've been planning this for months, and yeah, yeah, hoping. This isn't the uh, timeshare cabin, is it? No, that's in a month. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You want to talk uh, about that, Bill, or is that something you'd prefer mm, not to talk about? Uh, just uh, watch who you talk to at Cabela's or, or Bass, Pro. <laughs> uh, Bass Pro. They'll rope you into something. I'm easily sold on things, so. Um, I guess that's my downfall. I couldn't afford not to. You but, couldn't afford not so, to. So, uh, you know, I'm going to find out here in a month uh, after I sit through a couple hours of um, timeshare stuff on my birthday. On your birthday. Yeah, they, they booked it on my birthday. How'd they know? So, uh, yeah, we'll see if it's worth it or not. Yeah, the next thing you know, you're going to be like, can someone, you're going to be, uh, have, you, have you ever hear those timeshare, get out of the timeshare commercials <laughs> yeah. on the radio? It's going to be you with Sean Hannity. I want to talk to Sean Hannity right now. I need to get out of this this timeshare. 
Uh, my buddy had a time show. He loved it. I mean, they went away a couple times a year, him and his wife. So for them, it was great. I mean, I guess it's it got to be worth your money, though, too, for that. You know, if you're only going to be doing it twice a year, how much are you paying a month on that? You know, right, right. I don't yeah. Know. Mm. yeah, this is just, we're going up to Point Falls. So we'll see. This could be a pretty cool trip, too. Yeah, it sounds amazing. Sounds amazing. Speaking of deals right now, if you guys go on our rem- oh, uh, website, on our website, remotenopressure.com, we have a limited amount of the Bob White T-shirts left and we are clearancing those things out. Uh, speaking of you can't afford not to. You can't afford not to. You can't afford not to. Uh, Ten bucks for a Bob White T-shirt. Uh, I think it's like two bucks for mailing or something. So all in, you're you're out twelve bucks for a t-shirt. Um, that's pretty good. But we're just trying to get them all sold before the season's over. Uh, so go to check them out at remotenopressure.com. There's a couple other things there on our website that's on sale. And um, we yeah. still got the Sasquatch buffs. We still got the Sasquatch buffs. Get it before the COVID season ends, right? Yeah, yeah. Are are the Sasquatch mating season? Oh man. I mean, that's really in the spring uh, and the fall. Uh, is that something you want to? Will, will that lure them in? Is, no. Okay. I mean, this is really going to protect you during that season if you're out on the river, um, you know. And but see, they're they're. Um, I guess you know the more I look into it, the less they really have a mating season. They're kind of like humans, so I guess that they may get aroused at any time of the year. So it's better if you just get one because you can never. Ooh, be the too wind's safe. blowing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there's. I've been reading this book um, called *Sapiens*, and um, and it talks a lot about like um, *Sapiens*, and then there was the Neanderthals, and then there was another group of humans. They're, they're saying okay, interesting. Seven hundred thousand years ago, and *Sapiens* did not mate with Neanderthals because they literally had different sex organs. Whoa different body odor, different everything. It's kind of like a goat and a horse, kind of the same species, but they're not going to mate. Interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. You know, the problem- Like a, like the, a Great Dane and a Chihuahua. Well, they would technically be able to breed. It wouldn't be comfortable for the Chihuahua. <laughs> well, it depends on, it depends uh, on which yeah, one's yeah, which. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. so yeah. <laughs> Exactly, but they're the same breed. They're the same uh, species. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. Class, of right? Whatever. But he, they're saying like sapiens, and then the Neanderthals were, you know, they they had different sex organs. So that's kind of it's what I think about. Maybe Squatch is a Neanderthal that's like left over from the Neanderthal age. That's that's a possibility too. Uh, then we wouldn't have anything to worry about. Yeah, there's nothing that we, they can't get you pregnant. I mean, yeah. Do you do you remember a guy by the name of Peter Johnson? I do. I love the name I Peter know. Johnson. It used that to was make me giggle when I work. <laughs> yeah. I remember Nate was saying, <laughs> "You're telling me his name is Peter Johnson." It's like that's the best name. Well, anyways, well, Peter Johnson told me a story about one time he was up in the UP doing the golf thing. You know, and I think it was in fall or spring or whatever. Whenever I'm not a hunter, so I think it's the fall when they go into rut. Oh, and, bucks. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm not talking about Bigfoot anymore. No, I'm talking about bucks. Okay, there's no Bigfoot rut. No, what, there's no just, Bigfoot just rut. Just clearing this up. Just making sure. <laughs> like calling them in, you know? <laughs> Put on some uh, some, some, some Sasquatch musk. urine. Just a little behind the ears. A little behind the ears. <laughs> Keep the ladies. <laughs> no, but um, he was saying he got attacked by, uh, by a buck on the golf course during rut one year up in the UP. Wow. Yeah, because they were just like out of control, you know? So. That's crazy. I'm, I'm also kind of impressed that he was able to golf during the rut because the up is colder than it is down here oh yeah usually the rut's like mid-november yeah well, uh, it might have been cadillac or something i don't know oh, but it was just telling know. a story maybe he was just lying he was a pastor <laughs> he's never been he's never been golfing <laughs> actually that was a friend of mine it wasn't even me <laughs> i'm pretty sure you said it was you peter i digress but anyways speaking of I don't know. Speaking of whatever, getting drunk on the golf course, beer lovers know the names and I'm not talking about your local spaceship fruity IPA. I'm talking about the names in this competitive beer landscape, two hearted drunken monks, Pliny the elders and grapefruit space time machines agreed that there's a new name in town. It's the international beer challenge award winner of 2020. We didn't say award award. Oh, we're let's try it again. It's the international beer challenge award winner award. 
of 2020. <laughs> Bend Oregon's Craft Beer Award winner in 2020. Award. Oh. <laughs> One of the top selling beers in Whole Foods. This unbelievable IPA, only 70 calories. And drum roll, please. It's non alcoholic. We know that's not a drum roll, so don't email me. It's a joke. <laughs> no, do email or it's comment below. Comment below. Comment below. WTF is that drum roll. Um, <laughs> I love craft beer and it's hard not to when you live in Michigan, but I've had to cut back. Nothing takes a harder toll on my body like local craft IPAs. Although some people claim that the dad bod is so hot right now. Well, I just don't believe them. Athletic Brewing's Run Wild IPA is a non-alcoholic, fully brewed, not diluted, non-alcoholic, low calorie award. Award. I think that's where we always say the award. I think so too. There's, I didn't realize there's three of them in this There's so three, three awards. Uh, and you know, lots of awards. How many for people are still brewing? listening to this right now? And not haven't very skipped many. through. Uh, it's about a two minute ad. I'm gonna <laughs> <laughs> have this beer, or any beer that, or any brew shipped to you directly to your doorstep, and save twenty percent with your discount code Beer Money Twenty. Go to athleticbrewing.com, enter the code Beer Money Twenty to experience this new name. Again, that's athleticbrewing.com, and enter Beer Money Twenty. Thank you for everyone who's ordered Athletic Brewing, um, and use the discount code. Because I got a report, and I'm very appreciative of everyone who went online and ordered that. Oh, that's awesome! Thanks, guys. Thanks, yeah. guys. Bill, let us know what you think too. Like we enjoyed it. Yeah, hopefully everybody out there enjoyed it too. You know, the problem with reading that that copy so many times is it sounds like I'm being disingenuous, almost like I've memorized it. Mm -hmm. That's what all, I was picking up on. Yeah, but out in all reality. <laughs> <laughs> and in reality, I like the beer. I thought I, I the IP right. was really good. I haven't had a real beer in over five years. And like that was bringing back some memories. Not that I was going to go out and get sloshed afterwards. Uh -huh. but, uh, but yeah, it was it was some tasty stuff. Might, might pick up a menthol. Oh, those are man. outlawed now. Did you? you know, uh, I heard Biden wants to that do that. That's interesting. Passed? I don't think it passed yet. Because only black people smoke menthols. Now, doesn't that sound racist wanting it, it to does. take away one of their only pleasures in this world? It does. You know, don't get me started on that, Bill, because the sin taxes, okay? This, let me go on like a little bit of a libertarian rant here because this is what happens when you trigger me, Bill, and you know what you're doing. Ooh. Okay. Uh. <laughs> Here's the deal. Sin taxes disproportionately affect the poor. And I know that oh, we, maybe this will discourage them. It doesn't discourage them from smoking. It doesn't. It's not going to discourage you from drinking. But people who are poor, this is the one thing they, they use to cope with stress in life. And they're the ones who disproportionately drink and smoke. Well, I don't know about the drinking part. but if There's other drugs out there that you can do instead of drinking that are, might be cheaper in the future. Who knows? Who knows? But I will say that whenever they raise sin tax, it's really easy to do that because everyone, oh, it's naughty. <laughs> but in all reality, it's the poor people that are disproportionately affected. Mm -hmm. So you think about if you, have a, if you pay $5 in tax on a on cigarettes and a, a beer at the end of the day right so you smoke a pack a day and you're making minimum wage that's like an hour's worth of work yeah that, you gave an hour right there to the last hour of your day there yeah it's like 12 and a half percent tax yep on your entire income that day i digress how does that anyways it doesn't set right anyways no. okay but speaking of gym base How's the gym bay coming along, Bill? You know, I picked it up, and uh, there's no turning back. Have you ever wondered what it would be like to have a one-stop shop for virtual wellness services that support the social, emotional, physical, and intellectual well-being of individuals? Can't say as I've, I'm, I'm I think a bad you person. have, Bill. I think the copy says you're supposed person. to say, I've always wondered I where I could find a one-stop shop <laughs> For virtual wellness <laughs> services that supports the social, emotional, physical, and intellectual well-being of individuals. That's the copy. At. That's You're it. supposed to say that. And I didn't I'm have it say, in front of me. Well, you know what, Bill? Look it's no further. Look no further. This today is the day. <laughs> and I know out there, there's a lot of people out there right now wondering the same thing. Where can I find a one-stop shop for virtual wellness services that support the social, emotional, physical, and intellectual well-being of individuals. Well, today is your day. Hallelujah. Today <laughs> is your day. Pick up the phone right now. Or actually, pick up your phone and go to therestorationdepot.com. You can learn all about meditation. You can even take a gym bay class. There's some cool yoga classes on there as well. Uh, and it's just, it's just a really cool website. Are you, you don't meditate too much, do you, Bill? You know, I'm a, I'm actually about to start back into that, yeah. Like, But I do it like electronically. I, I do. I have like little uh, app 
apps on my phone and and devices that clip to my head. So well, see, I was I do it crazy. I was really into grounding. You yeah, know, grounding I've is grounding walk, too, walking yeah. out with barefoot. And uh, <clears throat> I live in the country. I live in Cornfield, as you know, mm-hmm. Bill. And mm-hmm. uh, I live close to an elementary school, which is a couple doors down from me. And before at night, like at 1 a.m. in the morning, I mean, it's pitch dark. You can't see your hand in front of your face. Well, because of COVID, the school decides to put in a bunch of lights outside. So at night, my big yard is now kind of lighted. Well, used to. They did this because of COVID? It had to be because it was during the closing and everything last year. Mm. All of a sudden, I noticed because we have a big 4th of July party every year when it's super dark. We have family over and we th- we do like $1,000 worth of fireworks, which isn't that much. But for me, I don't buy that. But, you know, pe- people in the family, you know, <laughs> I'm not spending a thousand bucks on fireworks. But, you know, we have a good time. I mean, it's yeah. like a big party, you know. Yep. Well, after the July 4th fireworks, probably like August or September, I noticed that like, my backyard's well lit. And I thought, well, the moon's out. But no, it's not. But see, I would do this op- clothing optional grounding, okay, in my backyard. Who all was invited to this? Just me. Okay. All right. Just making sure. Okay, and now, <laughs> now I can't do that because the school put in lights. Now I've got to figure out how I can call the principal and be like, hey, could you cut the lights down? It's keeping me up at night. But really, what I want to do is ground late at night, like one in the morning. You could do that at like four in the afternoon too. Just, I mean, not clothing when the kids When the kids just, are getting out of school? Just take your shoes elementary up. school? That might scare them away from the <laughs> fence, right? <laughs> There's no fence, brother. That's the problem. There's no fence between no. you and the school? No, but I got trees, you know, and I oh. got to go pick up my son. My son goes to the school, so I could just ground and, and like, do that. I mean, I would go to jail for that. Bill. I mean, honestly, you don't need to... You can just take your shoes off and ground... Well, just walk in the grass. Or uh, when you go know. fishing, you know, wet wading, you're, you're, you're grounding right there, too. No, here's the other issue, though, is this year I got chickens, and they free range, and I oh. can't I can't really do the whole barefoot thing. Oh yeah, due that to would make fecal sense. matter. Do these chickens go in the um, school? No, they don't. I mean, which oh, not pretty, in the school. They're, you know they're I mean. pretty far away from the school because where they are in the yard. But if they get much braver, uh, I can't free range them during the day if they do that. So how's the chickens going for you? Well, I bought six. Uh, I thought two would die, so I bought a coop for four chickens. Oh boy! All six chickens are alive and super healthy. That's so, good news. Good news. <laughs> but I'm I'm a little nervous that their coop's not going to work anymore. I was hoping a couple would die. Maybe I'll fry them up, but my kids aren't going to let that happen. Yeah, I mean, there's veal, which is like baby cows, like calves. Yeah. And I don't know what baby chickens are called. I mean, yeah. I guess eggs, but. <laughs> <laughs> but they're getting bigger. You know, they're, bi- they're getting bigger. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I guess we'll figure that out. But speaking of going on a walk, in other news. <laughs> Bill, have you ever wanted to take your dog on a long walk? I don't even have a dog. If you had a dog, would you ever want to take your dog on a long walk? I mean, where are we talking here? Like in the neighborhood? No, because there's other dogs and they got to sniff each other. If you were talking out in the wilderness, yeah, I'd probably do that. One of the benefits of having pet fish is there's not a lot of walking involved. I would agree with that. But according to sadanduseless.com, and you guys, if you're on the YouTube channel, you can take a look at it. Um, Want to take that pet fish for a walk? Now there's a bag for that. A Japanese company, Ma Corporation. Ma Corporation, <laughs> M-A. <laughs> Ma! Sounds like a South Park thing. <laughs> is, is working on an unusual container-like bag for live fish, suitable, suitable both for pet owners wanting to take their favorite fish on walks and fans of super fresh sashimi. Known as Katsugiyo bag, this portable fish tank is shaped like a long tube with a transport middle section, a handle and gauge which monitors oxygen saturation levels of the water. Okay, I I was going to say, haven't there been bags for years that people take their pet fish home from the, you know, whenever you go to Meyer Walmart, wherever you're you're getting your fish from, you, you take them home in a little bag. Yeah, but there's only so much oxygen in the bag. So I guess, I guess this will like, you know, you could take it out for a, for a while. The Katsugayo bag is currently still in development. So if it looks like something you'd happily spend money on, you'll have to wait a bit longer. Mm. Its inventors are currently testing the device with a variety of edible fish and documenting each experiment on Instagram. 
See link below. Improvements for the Katsuyago bag are still likely to occur as it's tested with more types of fish. For example, developers report that fish that like to swim a lot, like mackerel, could be more problematic to transport, and they promise to make unnecessary adjustments for the product. But could this be a uh, like almost a live well for fishermen out there? Yeah, to catch and hold on till they get home and um, stow your trout. Stow the trout. It's like a a creel, a live creel, a live creel. That would be the name of it. Live creel. We just found our marketing here in America. There you go, live creel. We're gonna get the distribution rights, and put it up on our website. So if you guys could subscribe down below to the Remote No Pressure YouTube channel, you will also be able to go and buy your Kitsuyago bag. I don't even think that's how it's pronounced at all. I think that's yes. completely. Kitsuyago, no, Kitsuyago bag is what I said. The actual name of the bag is Katsugiyo. I don't think either one of those are right. I, I don't think so either. <laughs> Katsugiyo. But see, yeah. I, I'm not going to go there. <laughs> I got a crazy story about mask and my friend, but anyways, yeah, I would, I, I don't know. I, I, I mean, if I, I guess if I, I like sushi and I remember growing up on the Gulf coast and we would catch red snapper and be able to eat it fresh that night, getting it out of the live well. Mm-hmm. Um, so I guess if you're like, you know, you got some live fish in there and you're like, want to take it downtown or something, I guess it could be good. Yeah. It, it, that's, that makes more sense to me if you wanted live fish. Than uh, taking your pet for a walk. Than taking for a pet yeah. for a walk, yeah. I don't know, dude. I mean, I'll, I'll try it, but but then it's like you have to take this. Then does the fish get used to going on walks? Then I got to take it on a walk every day. Every you day. get home, it's going to be ticked at you, and it's going to make a mess on the carpeting. Oh, my gosh. How did you even get out? Uh, anyways, one of the people that I've longed to have on the podcast that I haven't been able to book um, you know, I think, you know, we're, we're doing another bill. This is our third Jeff and Bill episode in a row. It is. We have two more episodes after this one before the season's over, which would be really sad for everyone, but we're going to take some time off, recalibrate, get ready and for not, the fall. And not because we're sick. And right? not because we're sick. But, you know, I've interviewed a lot of people on this show, Bill. I think we can both agree to that. We can both agree to that. And the thing is, there's one person that I would like. The big fish, the whopper per se. Would that katsu that that tube? The help? katsu yago. He he would not fit in that, uh, in the katsu yago bag. But he is the big fish. Now, what if you bought him the katsu yago bag? Might he be on the show then? He might be on the show then. I mean, a little of course bribery. we got to wait for it to be you know out of production. And, uh, right. <laughs> I have no idea what we're talking about. No, but, go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> But but this is the big fish, Mr. Henry Winkler, the Fonz. Mm. I mean, he's the coolest guy that ever existed on TV. If anybody knows him, that maybe you're listening to the show and you can get us in touch with him. We've, we've interviewed famous people. We've interviewed some really famous people on the show. But Henry Winkler is not someone that I've been able to interview. Heard he's a super nice guy and he's very passionate about fly fishing. It's really funny because anybody, anytime people find out what I do, Oh, you have a fly fishing podcast. Oh, you sing songs about fly fishing. You know, Henry Winkler likes to fly fish. Everyone says that. I don't know how he became the fly fishing. Everyone knows that the Fonz likes yeah. to fly fish. Well, he tweets something about a fishing trip recently. I hate, I'm not a big fan of Twitter. You can see by our Twitter feed, it just kind of updates. We have a Twitter feed? Yeah, we do. Well, It only updates when we publish new episodes. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. I'm not a big fan of Twitter. I'm not a big fan. You know, <laughs> so he posts up a picture about a rainbow trout that he caught. And then I guess the Twitterverse went crazy on it, basically saying he's a harsh dude. And like, how can you do this to fish? And they're so mean. Um, of course, there's a couple of pictures where he's not holding it right or whatever like that. But it seems like it seems like this is the Fonz. Everybody loves the Fonz. This is Henry Winkler. Why would people get so upset about him posting pictures on Twitter? With his fish. I think because it's 2021, and that's the thing to do, though. I saw that Starbucks is thinking about getting off Facebook because there's so much controversy. Every time they post something, people are like... Starbucks is? Yeah. What's so controversial about Starbucks? Well, like, there's, like, some right-wing people that are just like, get out of the politics and all that other stuff. Just service coffee. And, and you know, it's oh. gotten so... 
elevated. You don't hear mm-hmm. you hear a lot of that from the left, you know, but it's also coming from the right as well, and they're just like kind of frustrated. You can't win. Um, but I, we went ahead and put up the article there at Slate.com um, there, and you can take a picture, and you can let us know what you think of Henry Winkler's fish because I think it looks amazing. Um but yeah, it, it's we got the article there. Look, look, Henry Winkler's not blind to how bad it is out there. So you know, I don't want to just go off reading this, but it's very interesting to to check out because I unfortunately, like I'm I'm part of some forums online, okay, and it seems I'm I'm sometimes nervous to post a pic because people get pissed, mm-hmm. and it'll be like a smallmouth bass, or it'll be a bass, or like. You can hold it however you want. The thing's not going to die. It's not a, a brook, native brook trout in northern Michigan that you don't want to get any, you know, you don't want to touch. You don't want to keep it wet. You know, that bass you could do, you know, I'm not too concerned about, which I'll probably get hate mail about that. Mm-hmm. But, you know, there are times I don't want to post anything online for that reason. Is that, and I would say, Bill, I would say you probably feel the same way, but you don't have social media. I don't. I've been off the social media for a little bit now. Yeah. How does it feel? Oh, there's no, there's no pressure. Like, uh, you know, that I was working for a bar and a church at the same time. Mm-hmm. And this is, uh, I quit back in 2016 after my DUI. I've, I've, uh, I've been pretty open with everybody about that, but yeah. like I quit social media in 2018 because it was so polarized back then, even between, you know, politically and religious beliefs that, um, if, if I were to post one thing on, you know, anything favoring one side, the other side's going to say something, mm-hmm. you know? And so it was just, it wasn't worth it to me. And, that, and it's only gotten worse. I've heard since. So I, I've been completely off social media and I love it. Yeah. Yeah. You know, as we had mother's day, um, a couple, you know, last weekend. Mm-hmm. And, you know, if I look back on my post on Facebook, like five years ago, I'd be like, Oh, my wife is the most beautiful woman. I'm so happy. She's my wife, dedicated a little post to her. You mm-hmm. know what I mean? Yeah. But now it's like moral grandstanding and people just do it just to be like, look at me. I've got the best wife because this is what I'm supposed to do. Not because it's like a genuine thing anymore. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I yeah. mean? It's like a yeah. competition of like who can do the sappiest post. So my wife and I don't post anything. We don't, yeah. we're not that's, like. That's the best thing I think you can do. I mean, not in a negative way, but I mean like there's no point in stirring up one way or the other. You know what I mean? Yeah, it's really weird because like I I literally look at five, six years ago and I'm posting pictures of my kids, uh, you know, and it's just family commenting like, oh, it's so cute. Now it's like, it's just, it's crazy, dude. I don't like it. So I just post pictures of like libertarian politics, things we can all agree (laughs) on (laughs) because that's what we do. Libertarians, right? Because there's things like no knock warrants that I think conservatives and Republicans can usually agree on, you know. Yeah, I could see that. <laughs> Should I just go off and stir the pot? We only got two more episodes no, for the season. No, uh, Should I just go off on politics? Let's, let's, let's uh, end on a high note. Let's, let's end, end on, on a high, high note. You know what, Bill? See, that's why you're here. Higher you, ground, man. You bring the humor. You bring the level-headedness. Because without you, I would be an absolute just... Oh, no, I'm aware. I'm aware. <laughs> <laughs> It's your, yeah, you know what? It's funny because <clears throat> I was looking at starting to take a particular medication because of ED. Uh, no, <laughs> no. Just kidding. Sorry. How'd you know, Bill? <laughs> um, no, it's actually ADHD. Like I'm, I'm pretty like hyped up a lot. Um, hard for me to pay attention. I mean, you know, you've had some interactions with me, Bill, where I like forget a random chord. And yep. Then, yep. <laughs> <laughs> and so I've been looking at like alternatives because I don't really want to start taking drugs if I don't have to. It's mm-hmm. kind of a last resort for me. I don't like taking drugs. I don't like take, you know, uh, what is it? Um, not Xanax, but the other, the one for that, um, for ADHD, Ritalin, Ritalin or what's the, there's another one too. And I don't want to take that. So, I'm like, I'm going to try these. I heard nicotine helps with that, you know. Does it really? Yeah. And, and there are some people yeah. who have used that in place. And then I remembered Bill bought me some nicotine tablets that I had. And, you For know, your birthday. Yeah. So the last couple of days I've been trying the old nicotine and it's helped. All right. Yeah. But then I, you know, yesterday 
I'm getting the nicotine tablet out before I go into work and I put it under my tongue. It's cherry flavored, super delicious. And I was like, you know what, Bill, that SOB, he's been trying to medicate me because he knows that I. No. <laughs> well, that sounds pretty funny. Uh, I, honestly, that was not my intent. I know. <laughs> I, know. I know. I was just trying to share my wealth of uh, knowledge. I don't have a wealth of knowledge. <laughs> Uh, this is something that works for me that helps uh, uh, elevate my mind a little bit more, not in the like oh, next level, but I mean like uh, just it, it helps create your um, your creativity. Wow. Right. It's not working tonight. It's brain but, hacks. Yeah, exactly. Brain hacks. It's yeah. a neuro nootropic. Yeah, it's worked. And well, neuro -nu 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 well, what happened like a week ago, well, before I got sick, I should say, I tried drinking a uh, Mountain Dew in the morning because I heard that helps too. And that really? really, yeah, that really helped. It, my friend, she was a children's church pastor, and she had all these tiny little cans of Mountain Dew, you know, the mini cans? Yeah. And I'm like, why do you have those? She goes, some of the kids have ADD, and if I give them this Mountain Dew, they'll calm down. I'm thinking, that's going to get them all riled up. No, I've found with my friends at, at work, I've worked with the years, if they have ADD, caffeine slows them down. Yeah. Like yeah. Uh, if I have a buddy who I'd, I'd go to coffee with, it would make them drowsy. Wow. Yeah. Wow, that's wild. So I think I think that's the issue. So the Mountain Dew just makes me sick, but it's all makes good. Makes you sick, but so I, I, I yeah, it gives me sick, but so I had to take <laughs> the nicotine tablets. So anyways. I'm glad that's working for you though. Yeah, me me too, Bill. And uh, yeah, it's not it's uh, not cancerous like the well probably somebody's gonna write it and says it is, but it's, it's not or California will tell you it is, but well it's not just can not not cancerous, but like the other medications. Um, you know, that you get prescribed to you, they're like a controlled substance. And I don't really want to do that if I don't have to. So it's like, I want to exhaust all my options yeah. before doing anything like that. And that has nothing to do with fly fishing, Bill. It's nothing to do, but Henry Winkler does. So I think we've met our, our fly fishing. <laughs> uh, Let's see, politics. Politics. Fly fishing, fly Henry fishing. Winkler, nicotine. Bigfoot, we did it. Bruce, Bigfoot. Bruce Jenner. Bruce Jen no, we didn't talk about it. Um, um, Oh, we can say that for next week, I guess. Yeah, yeah. Um, I think that's about it. That's about it. it. Well, well, guys, I tell you what. Go to our website, remotenopressure.com. Check out what we have. Be sure to click like and subscribe to our YouTube. Bill, any final last words? Oh, man. I, uh, I, I, it's too late to be six plan. I can't go back now. I mean, there we go. Well, until next time, go fishing.